Okay guys, today I'm going to be talking about a very important topic, antivirus. Do you need to run an antivirus program if you run Linux? Well, yes and no. I have run Linux as my main desktop operating system for a decade now. I haven't used Windows, the last version of Windows I used on a desktop computer that I personally owned was Windows XP. I never bothered with Vista, I didn't like Vista, uh, and that's when I switched to uh, Linux full time. And I've never had a machine that ran Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. So I've gone 10 years without really ever needing any kind of antivirus on my desktops or laptops, all of them run Linux. I have never had an issue with viruses or malware, ransomware, adware, spyware, any of that. Where, you know, many years ago when I was running Windows, I mean, that was something you dealt with almost on a daily basis was antivirus. You, you were constantly under attack. I had machines that were taken control of with ransomware or basically they held your machine hostage. Uh, asking you for money to sell you the fix to the virus that they installed on your computer. Uh, that's just normal operating procedure in Windows. Windows is a very insecure operating system. Uh, ever since I sw switched to Linux, I've never had to deal with anything like that. I don't know of anybody personally that runs Linux on their desktops or laptops that has ever had to deal with anything like that. It is just it's very rare. Viruses and Linux are very rare. So do you need to run an antivirus program in Linux? No, you don't. You don't have to have one, but there are some special case uses where you might decide to install and run an antivirus program on your Linux machine. Uh, one such use case is if you have Windows machines and Linux machines also, you know, and you share files between those machines. You share documents, emails, what have you. Then being able to scan for those uh, those files for viruses on your Linux machine may be beneficial to prevent you from spreading those viruses to your computers that run Windows or to friends' computers, family computers that run Windows. So that may be something you take into consideration obviously in the workplace if you have uh, some machines running Linux some machines running Windows you may want to have antivirus programs on your Linux machines as well again to scan for Windows viruses on your Linux machine just to prevent you from accidentally spreading those viruses okay so what antivirus software should you run on your Linux machine? Well, there's there's a few options. There's actually quite, quite a number of uh, Linux antivirus programs out there, but there's not that many free Linux antivirus programs out there. And when I say free, I mean free as in freedom. I'm talking about open source software. Uh, if you want a free and open source antivirus program for Linux the uh, there, there's not a lot of options and but by far the most popular free and open source Linux antivirus program is called clam AV clam AV C L A M A V uh, it is in pretty much every Linux distributions repos it, it's that popular you should have no problem finding it in Debian's repos Ubuntu's repos Arch's repos I haven't checked you know Fedora or SUSE, but I'm sure they're in those repos as well. Uh, in this case, I'm running Ubuntu today, so sudo apt install clam av will install clam av on your Ubuntu or Ubuntu uh, based distro. I don't need to run that command though; I've already installed it. Now, clam av is not a graphical program. There is no GUI to it. You run clam av in the terminal in the command line so that is something to consider but 
it really is just a few commands you need to learn how to uh, type into the terminal to run clam AV it is not some scary program uh, you can do this guys after installing clam AV the first command you will need to run as root so in Ubuntu we, we need to invoke a sudo here for super user do basically we need to run this as root sudo fresh clam it's going to ask me for my password and you see it is updating basically uh, clam AV what this does is it basically updates the uh, the signatures after that uh, you know update of the, the uh, clam AV with sudo fresh clam to actually scan something you use the command clam scan but I'm not going to scan anything right now I want to show you how to get to the help page for clam scan so clam scan space dash dash help give it this help flag hit enter and now basically we have our little instruction manual on how to use clam scan you see all these flags that we could we could use everything from uh, you know how it writes to standard out to uh, this bell flag here which rings a bell when it scans a file and detects a virus we have recursive flags and just a ton of flags we can use so you may want to read over that because clam scan you know has a lot of options very powerful command you can do a lot with it but uh, probably the basic uh, way to use clam scan would be clam scan dash r for recursive meaning when it scans a directory we're going to give it a directory name here in a second we don't want it just to scan the directory we want it to scan all subdirectories all files in those subdirectories etc etc so clam scan then dash r then we're going to give it dash i for infected because by default clam scan when you run it list every file and directory it scans it's, it's a huge list in some folders say I ran on the uh, clam scan on my root folder recursively it will scan every file and folder on this system that is thousands and th hundreds of thousands of files and it's just gonna spit that out onto my terminal how am I gonna know which ones were okay and which ones that clam AV decided were potentially infected you won't so we only want it to return in the list the infected files and then I'm gonna give it this flag here dash dash bell that we just saw in the help page so it's gonna ring a bell when it finds an infected file and the only other argument to clam scan you need to give is a directory so we can just do root but again it's going to scan every file and folder on my system if I hit, hit enter right now that's going to take hours if you want to scan your entire system it really needs to be done overnight so I'm not gonna do my root folder recursively uh, for an example though I will do something like you know what my downloads folder I know there's probably nothing in it so maybe a few files it just should take a few seconds and yeah that just took I don't know maybe 10 seconds and you see you know the little summary after it's done first of all it knows about six million viruses so that's what it's trying to, de to uh, detect one of the 6.3 million viruses that clam AV knows about it scanned two directories in my downloads directory scanned three files infected files zero now I knew there was not much in that directory if I did a larger directory like my home directory recursively it would take quite some time uh, good directories to scan for potential viruses would be something like email especially email is a very big target for malware and viruses so in my home directory I would do the dot Thunderbird folder which stores all my Thunderbird emails so 
that would be one, you know, if you want to actually specifically target a folder that's likely to contain some infected files. Now the clam scan command here, as we uh, said earlier, has a lot of different flags you can give to it. For example, clam scan, then the dash R for recursive command. Then give it this flag, dash dash remove. Now what does the dash dash remove do? Well, as you might have guessed, it will remove all infected files it finds. So if, if Clam AV determines that this file is infected, it automatically removes that file from your system. I absolutely do not recommend you ever do that. Why? Clam AV does come up with a lot of false positives. For example, Windows executable files often come up in Clam AV as potentially infectious. Even Windows executable files you know are not infected. You know where they came from. They're from a trusted source. Yeah, so if you are the kind of person that runs a lot of Windows executables, say in Wine, uh, be prepared for that. Do not set Clam Scan to automatically remove infected files because you're going to lose all those Windows executables or, or a large percentage of them. Also, uh, sometimes it will accidentally determine uh, Linux programs, or excuse me, Windows programs that are wrapped in a Linux wrapper so they run on Linux are infected files. This can include things such as drivers. So, Clam Scan, if you had it to automatically remove infected files, could start deleting important drivers, you know, video drivers, Wi Fi drivers, and such, from your system. So, do not use the dash dash remove flag for clam scan, even though, you know, you might be tempted to when you read the, uh, the help file that we uh, showed you earlier. Don't automatically set that thing to remove. Now, some of you are going to be put off a little bit from having to run an antivirus program inside the terminal. Uh, you guys coming from more traditional Windows desktops are used to having graphical antiviruses. You're used to having antivirus programs that run on their own. You know, Clam AV does not run on its own. It is not constantly running in the background like those Windows antivirus programs are. It's not bogging down your system constantly looking for infections. Clam AV, you run it when you think you need to run it. Uh, on most Linux computers, I can't imagine you need to run it more than, you know, a handful of times a year just to check your system. It's not something I would run every day. It, it would be pointless to run it every day because, again, to scan your entire system could take hours. So maybe, you know, twice a year on your, tip, your average Linux desktop would be all I would do. In fact, I'm, I may not even leave Clam AV installed on, on my machine. If all I'm going to do is run it once or twice a year, I install it, run it one time overnight, see what was on my machine, and then the next day just go ahead and remove it and, you know, install it a year down the road when I feel like maybe doing another scan. So if you want a graphical interface to Clam AV, you need to install a program called Clam TK. That's C L A M T K, Clam TK. That is also easy to find in pretty much every Linux distribution's repos. Uh, in uh, Ubuntu, you would simply go to a terminal and sudo apt install Clam TK. I've already got it installed on this system, so I just go to the menu up here, type Clam TK, and here it is. Just a graphical program that interfaces with the Clam AV antivirus program. Basically, it functions exactly as the command line interface functions, except in a lot of ways the command line interface is a little easier because once you've figured out what kind of flags and stuff, you know, uh, how, what directories you want to scan, also in the command line you can, you know, direct that information to uh, save in a file or log for later use or for later uh, analysis. But the graphical program is easy enough to use. You have, you know, configuration here, settings. Let me open settings here. 
Now, under settings, I've got all of these ticked on. When I first installed Clam TK, I'll tell you about half of these were not ticked on. And in specific, uh, scan directories recursively is not ticked on. So that scan I did on my downloads directory earlier, or say I wanted to scan my Thunderbird directory, you know, all it's going to do is scan the Thunderbird directory. It's not going to go into any of those subdirectories, scan any of those files in those subdirectories. So you're going to wonder why when you run uh, Clam TK on a directory the first time, it happens in seconds and it only scans you know a handful of files and you know you've got thousands of files in some of these folders that's why so you need to go to settings make sure recursively is ticked on also by default it does not scan files larger than 20 megabytes I turn that on other than that you've got options for white listing files uh, quarantine updates and then down here is the important stuff scan a file you want it to scan a specific file, scan a directory. You know, you click scan directory and then, you know, give it a directory to scan. So, you know, basically there's all the directories in my home folder. I could pick one of these and have it scan. I'm not going to do that on this video. So, Clam TK, you know, pretty straightforward to use. But honestly, uh, unless you just feel like you need a graphical interface, Clam AV, the command line interface, is really all you need. Uh, very simple to use command line program lightweight not a ton of dependencies to it so uh, you guys if, if you feel like you do need an antivirus program on your Linux computer and honestly for 90 percent of us we don't need antivirus you'll never encounter a virus on your Linux machine uh, Windows is pretty much where viruses live. It's all Windows. As Android and Mac OS gain in popularity, you're starting to see more Android and Mac viruses. But still, Linux and BSD, very, very rare. You hear about viruses and Trojans and stuff like that in Linux. And when you do hear about it, it's big news because it's so rare. It's also big news because since we run an open source uh, operating system, by the time those news articles on the latest Linux Trojan out there go to press and are printed on websites, there's already patches. You know, in this case, I'm running Ubuntu. If I've run an update before that news article about that virus is printed, chances are my machine has already been patched for that virus before I ever read about it, you know, on some website. So, big difference uh, in Linux you know in the open source community then running proprietary operating systems like Windows, Mac, even Android. So peace guys.